do today, we're gonna to run through the history of the atom, okay? All right, so let's go. History of the atom, all right? Okay, now the funny thing is, you have to know, right, the models of the atom that were proposed. You have to know the scientists who proposed them, okay? You have to know the experiments that were done by this particular scientist, okay? If this if scientist did an experiment, okay? Now, sometimes students mix up model of the atom with the experiment. You gotta be careful with that. The experiments that came up with models of the scientist proposed. So we'll talk about that as we move along. Okay, so let's jump into it. Now, the first guy, um, Democritus, right? He was a Greek philosopher. Now, he first proposed, you know, the atom as being a small individual particle, right? But he doesn't get much, as I say, um, um, accolades as Dalton, all right? So let's jump to Dalton. Now, Dalton's model of the atom, right, is a solid, indivisible, homogeneous sphere, okay? No parts to it, just a solid ball. So think of a, um, a marble, think of a cannonball. Sometimes this model is called the marble model or the cannonball model. All right? Okay, so there's no part, absolutely no parts to it. Think of a sphere, okay? And you just color it in. Okay, so there's absolutely no parts to it. Bam. All right? That's it. So along comes J.J. Thompson, right? Okay. J.J. Thompson. And he does a very, very famous experiment he does the cathode ray tube experiment guys okay so it's a critical experiment that you need to know now I'm gonna draw a crude representation of it to explain it okay but definitely you know look at the more better animation to get a better flavor of what the, what the um, cathode ray tube uh, experiment um, entails I also have a video that I made uh, demo in class so you can check that one out also no problem I probably put it you can just look through the site or put it put it, put it in the way all right so the cathode ray tube experiment, right? Essentially, you had a tube, all right? That was mostly basically a vacuum, with mostly air taken out, right? Air at low pressure. And the cathode being on this side, okay? And the anode on this side, right? And an electrical source was used to zap it, right? And what happened from there? Thompson observed that a ray came out of the from the cathode side and went towards the anode side, okay? So he did some tests on that ray, and he tested with a magnet, and he noticed that the magnet deflected the ray, okay? So that proved that the ray had some type of charge to it, right? But what classically that you need to know is he used electrical plates, okay? I put one above and one below. Now, one of the electrical plates was negative, and one of the electrical plates was positive, right? Now what happened in the ray, it kind of moved towards the positive plate, okay, and away from the negative. So we know in nature, right, opposites do what? Opposites attract, right? So from there he proposed that the ray contains some type of negative particle, all right? So J.J. Thompson is attributed with discovering the electron, okay, so it's important to know. Now what experiment Discover the electron, the cathode ray tube experiment. So make a note of that. Cathode ray tube experiment, okay? So you, know, you gotta know that, okay? And the electrons of a charge are negative in charge. Very important to know, all righty. So then he proposed a model, all right? So the cathode ray tube experiment, that's the experiment. Now he proposed a model now. Now his model, was called the plum pudding model. Okay, plum pudding model. Okay, and in the plum pudding model, he essentially said that the electrons are scattered basically randomly. Okay, alrighty. And sort of kind of embedded or implanted in a mass of positive charge. So if you think of a raisin cookie dough, for example, right? The negative electrons, they will be the raisins, and the positive charge will be the dough 
which the rings are stuck in. So the electrons are stuck inside of this mass of positive charge. Okay, so it's called a plum pudding model. But plum pudding is more of a European dish. Okay, dessert. So we tend to say right, raisin cookie dough model. But no problem. Let's remember plum pudding model also. Okay. All right. So let's start again. We start with Dalton. He came with a cannonball model. Absolutely no parts. Solid ball. Now remember Dalton, right? He's very famous. There's a couple of theories, right? Um, the law of multiple proportions. Multiple proportions, which we, you know we don't talk about that much, but it's a very important law. Also, the law of definite proportions, okay? So, like for example, H2O, okay, and um, you know, elements combining the definite or number ratios for the law of definite proportions. But we'll talk about that later. But definitely know that Dalton was a cannibal model first. Cathode ray tube experiment was done by J.J. Thompson. Okay, the ray was attracted towards a positive. Okay, so from there we know that the, the ray had some type of negative charge in it. We call that particle electron. So Thompson discovered electrons and came up with the plum pudding model. Okay, we're going to jump into the others next.